a backer of my most recent book send me a fun little homemade weapon that we're going to look at, but I'm going to use it to make my thank you video to another backer of the book, Richard Curran. First, let's briefly look at the book Richard helped me make. This copy is a little beat up because it's the one I kept for myself. It's been out about five weeks, hard to believe, and in that time, over a month, still in the top ten on Amazon's Weapons and Warfare. At least for most of the time that it's been out. And that is really gratifying, because it has been years in the making. But anyway, let's get on to the weapon, as advertised in the video title. It's a single knuck, or single knuckle, knuckle duster. And with my huge affinity for saps and blackjacks and related street weapons, you would think I'd be a huge fan of nucks in general. I mean, I like them, but I've never really deep-dived on them, I guess. And so let's play around with this one. No, I know you don't grab it like that. I was just playing around, but yeah, that might actually work a little bit. That's how you're supposed to hold it, of course. You get that bracing inside the fist. That being said, the usefulness of these has always been a hotly debated subject because some people say you are going to hurt yourself using them. And for that reason, there are varying theories on how best and how safest to use them. Safe for you, not to the opponent, of course. And we'll get into that a little bit. But first, in the very standard manner, you're of course closing your fist, like I said, and you would think that it kind of protrudes that way, or maybe up against the finger, but what I always find is as soon as you actually squeeze, the ring or rings actually point downward, just like that. I'll do some much more robust punching tests in a minute. So with these, you don't actually punch the way you would with a normal closed fist. As best I can tell, what you would do is halfway between a standard punch and the knocking on the door motion. And this picture here seems to confirm it. Look where the brass knuckles are actually lined up. And you're not hitting with the big knuckles at all. Or I should say, emulating the motion you would use to hit with those. Meaning a normal punch. And this is the most natural punching motion, and the most commonly one used around the world for, I would say, three different reasons. One, you're hitting with the largest, biggest knuckles. Two, you're spreading the impact out over that flattened area that the fingers form. And three, you're aligning your fist with your forearm. And that's why we see it used so much and taught so much from traditional East Asian martial arts to the modern sport versions of those arts and to Western style boxing. Doesn't really matter. The physics and the anatomy still apply. You give all of that up when you punch with brass knuckles. Of course, what you get is a force multiplier and a metal one but you're punching in a bit of an awkward way and with a metal implement that pushes back onto and into your hand. And for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction, right? And this is why some people say this weapon is not worth it because you can break your own hand or finger or fingers. And this criticism has been around since at least the 1800s. And I do think there's logic to that, but the counterpoint would of course be that these things have been used for a really long time. And would people really keep making, carrying, and using these if more often than not, or all too often, let's say, they really hurt the user? And the question, in my opinion, answers itself. No, they wouldn't, especially not for centuries and centuries. And what this reminds me a lot of is the debate about nunchucks, nunchaku. As I've documented on the channel, I do agree there's an element of potential self-harm from nunchaku, but I think that's easily mitigated by skill. But that's a developed skill. It does take a little bit of time. I don't think it's a good idea for somebody to put one of these on and just swing with everything they've got. Just like when Shad from Shadiversity declared nunchucks are stupid, but in trying to prove that point shows a complete lack of skill. I'm not just teasing Shad either, but like you see him here, ends up with his back to the target, all twisted up, and literally hopping on one leg. Because he tried to swing really hard with a weapon he didn't know how to use. Well, it's the same thing here. Nucks have been around for a long time, as you're about to see in this collection, and much longer than this, by the way, and have gotten used so much that obviously people have figured out how to use them, despite the actual, real danger of self-harm. But if you just hand a pair to someone who has no idea how to use them and have them punch a wall hard or something like that, they're going to hurt themselves. Here's a modern variation on the single knuckle. The single version was never as popular, not today, not yesterday, never as popular as the full fist version, but boy, it sure is more convenient to carry. One of these, or the one I'm about to experiment more with, is almost unnoticeable in the pocket. Well, I said we were going to punch things more, so let's get to that. Remember my handy-dandy antique weapons catalog that I've used in weapons testing before? I've still got it lying around. 
and hitting it on top of a unyielding hard surface that equals a much tougher target than anything on the human body because there's no give whatsoever i mean that is putting it mildly so let's try it out gonna use it of course in the standard position at least at first already found an adjustment i need to make a very small one now like i said i'm hitting something that has practically no give but I'm also not swinging as hard as you would in a fight, so maybe it evens out a little bit. And bottom line is this doesn't feel great. It doesn't feel like you can't use it, but yeah, your hand feels stress. But we have to keep in mind a single knuck really reduces the force of impact on the hitting end, but also back towards your hand. A full set is going to spread it out much more. Now let's try these swiping strikes, which some people say is the correct way to use brass knuckles, because that way you're avoiding the direct impact. You can see on the paper there, over the image, the marks where it marred it as I raked it across. And as the unconfirmed story goes, that's why they're called knuckle dusters, because it's like you're dusting the other guy's jacket. So how does my hand feel? Like I said, it felt the stress. The funny thing is it's all up there. It's at the fingers and the second knuckle, and I really expected it to be more inside the palm. So what kind of strikes would I throw with it? Uh, I've talked about this book before, one of my favorite books, martial arts books of all time. Fists, Wits, and a Wicked Right. In it, the author, Mark McYoung, details several kinds of strikes, but one of them is this kind of like cobra snapping short-range strikes. So fast repeat, pull back, hit again, not punching in the conventional boxing type manner. So peppering the opponent, causing sharp pain somewhere where it's going to hurt. So let's try that with a conventional hold on a large muscle group. And yeah, that hurts and doesn't hurt my hand at all. But you know, in terms of experimenting, why stop there? Like, how else could you maybe hold this? How about... No, you know, kind of a thumb strike. I know it sounds crazy, but you can actually strike like this as an old jiu-jitsu thing and karate, all kinds of things. Sideways, digging the thumb in, but no, that doesn't work. How about this? Kind of a pistol grip kind of a thing. If you'll notice when I do that, there's, here's my hypothesis, there's less space between the bracing portion and my hand. You know, because it fits right up against the meat of the thumb there. See there, there's way more space, and I don't think space is a good thing. That fits better, but that doesn't mean it hits better. And so, of course, there's only one thing to do. Break out our trusty friend, and let's try this. I really don't know where this is going. It feels just about as viable as the regular hold. Maybe a little less. See that red there? Funny enough, it reminds me of punching with a sigh. I'm pretty sure my channel is the only place on the internet where you'll see somebody actually experimenting with punching with a sigh, even though it's very common in the katas and the forms. And what I learned was practically all of the stress goes to that same spot on the inner thumb. But back to the weapon we're looking at today, I'd say the standard hold is better. But what if I to this novel hold I was playing with and strike sideways like a high toe, like a ridge hand. As you can probably tell by the gusto I started using there towards the end, and that actually felt pretty good. I would say better than a standard strike. I mean, maybe it's just me, maybe it's the way I was hitting, I'm thinking I was doing a fair comparison when I wasn't, don't know. Anyway, Here's some variations on the single knuck. This one really modern, I would guess. This one more of a throwback. Speaking of throwback, the overall strategy employed here has existed for a long, long time in multiple places. This is an ancient Indian version of a kind of fist assist weapon. Hawaiian shark teeth knuckle duster. Hey, yikes. Uh, I do a chapter on shark tooth weapons in the book, by the way. And then the kind I'm most familiar with, because it comes from the Kabuto, you know, karate weaponry tradition, Teko. And so Japan, Hawaii, India, the West, different materials, metal, horn, wood. And there's the thumbnail from a video on a modern wooden pair that I did. And then you have the hybrid combination weapons. Probably the most famous example using a knuckle duster would be the trench knife. And of course, that's not the only knife in history that ever combined these features, not far from it. But then you also have firearms, like this antique here. My thing looks pretty cool, doesn't it? This one. And of course, the most famous one of all time, the knife, 
knuckle duster, and revolver favored by the Apaches in Paris. And if you want to see a video of me holding and examining an authentic antique example, then you can watch the video that I'm showing in the center of the screen here. And there's even a single knuckle duster revolver combination from history, and you can see an actual example of it on, you guessed it, my channel. But back to the standard configuration we're looking at today, how about just one more experiment? How else might you strike with this thing? Well, how about a hammer fist? Is that the craziest thing ever? I don't know. I'm gonna grip the loop naturally, and then you've got that anchor shape there at the bottom. I mean, it seems like all the force would go up into the side of your pinky, and that does not seem like a good thing. But let's give it a shot. I've got it in hand, and here we go. Okay, that one really surprises me. It feels fine. You know, I've taken Krav Maga on and off. I have, oh, I'd say intermediate skill in that martial art, and they teach hammer fists. They didn't, they didn't invent hammer fists, obviously, but kind of those real short, snappy, punchy ones, which goes along with the strategy I was saying earlier. So I've got my nook in hand, and, you know, there's kind of a straight standard punch, of course, the swiping ones we talked about. But here's how those straight into the face short hammer fists would work. And that seems pretty practical with this implement, as far as I can tell. And as long as I'm here, what about the Haito type strike, the ridge hand, but with that hammer fist grip, where the anchor portion is what's protruding from your hand? Well, I would say that all of these seem at least as viable as the intended technique, but it's really important to note that might have to do with my hand size. This one I'm not recommending as practical, but I do think this would be a really cool design. And just make the loop much bigger, so it's meant to go on the inside of the hand instead of around a finger. And what else can we say about this little guy? Well, that extra pocket that jeans have certainly makes a great place to carry it. It's small and light enough that you don't really even feel it, and a quick grab with the fingers and it's ready to go. Well, like I said, a fun little weapon. Useful, I would say definitely. It's a small, convenient force multiplier. It does not feel good to get hit with by any stretch. And with just a little bit of practice, I think it can be used safely. The one thing, the one technique where I could see somebody hurting themselves with it, even if they're kind of practiced with it, would be a full power swing, one thrown with just reckless abandon. I mean, an all-out haymaker. Which, if you think about it, is a bad fight technique anyway, in terms of practicality. It's just overcommitting way too much to one strike. But we don't endorse hitting anyone with anything on this channel. This is just a martial arts weapons history exploration. Oh, thanks, by the way, to Matt Menefee for making it for me. And again, thank you to Richard Curran for supporting my latest book. Thanks for watching.